Yirashai Mase. Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot 'em Up Saturday, and on the menu this Saturday, we have Polybius, Llama Soft's newest psychedelic trippy shoot 'em up inspired by an urban legend. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. So as you start up the game, or rather before you can even start the game, you get this warning screen where you have to read through the warnings. It goes and says, this game contains psychedelic visuals. Click on the psychedelic visuals, which is what it wants you to do. This game contains intense color combinations, geometric patterns, and animated shapes that some users could find disturbing. Once we've read that, we're back to this screen, and we click on the flashing images. This game contains strobing images and flashing color patterns at various frequencies that some users could find disturbing. And on we go. So the game is checking to make sure you're okay with what is described there. It's a, definitely a title with its psychedelic and flashing visuals that could be problematic for some. So that warning should apply to this video as well. If you have problems with or a history of seizures, epilepsy, I'd recommend skipping this video. Or if those uh, kind of visuals disturb you at all, go ahead and take a pass this week. But if you are okay with that, and you're okay with playing the game, then you can press X and let's continue. Llamasoft presents Polybius. So there's three possible modes we can play the game in. There's Classic, Pure, and YOLO. So Classic is of course your classic experience where you start at level 1 initially, but if you happen to get a game over, you can continue from your best start at the highest levels you've reached. Pure starts at level 1, has the same rules as Classic, but you're always starting at level 1. And then YOLO, unlike Classic and Pure, you don't gain any more shields at the end of stages, which shields basically act as lives in this. So it's just one, see how good you can do starting from level 1 and get as far as you can possibly go. So I should know that there's also some great ways to enjoy this title. So not only does this look great on a normal TV, but it also is available for 3D TVs, which is something I haven't seen in quite a while. That fad died out really quick, so for Llamasoft to develop the game with a 3D TV in mind is awesome for those of you that own them. It also plays on PSVR, which would be incredible, but the game already melts my mind as is, so I think my brain would just be fall coming out of my ears if I were to play it on PlayStation VR. So, that being said, let's start up Classic. So from here, you can select which level you want to start at. If you're just beginning the game, it'll be level 1, Onset, but you can select the other levels at your best start of that particular level once you've reached it. So we'll start with Onset, so we can show you the title. Onset, familiarize yourself with your ship and environment. Do what comes naturally. And I feel like that's the best instructions you could possibly get for this game. Do what comes naturally. As far as the control is concerned, we've got only a couple of things we can really do. We can move the ship left and right, and we can shoot, and that is essentially all you can do. In some of the other things that are present on the stage, we can fly through these bullhorn gates. Those will give us boosts and a moment of deflectors. So deflectors are basically... It's like a shield, but you shouldn't get the terminology too confused as the game does have shields, as, as I mentioned earlier, your lives. So deflectors basically make you invulnerable for the amount of time you have on there. They are displayed on the screen, but sometimes it can be hard to pick out things on the screen due to the trippy, cra uh, crazy visuals that we have going around on us. In addition to gates to fly through, enemies to shoot, we also have pills that sometimes fly at us. Those ones will give us various power-ups. Potentially. They could power up our weapon, they could give us boosts, they could give us point bonuses, all these things. And we get them by going through gates, destroying enemies, destroying certain buildings on the stages themselves. When you complete a stage, 
you're given a shield increase if you're playing in pure and classic from uh, however many shields you had before you get an increase of three so it is possible to finish a stage with no shields in reserve if all your shields run out but you don't get hit any more times then you'll start the next stage with a bare minimum of three shields which is nice keeping in mind that you're playing in pure or classic if you're playing in yolo then well you're out of luck <laughs> It's only possible to get a, to a maximum of 9 shields though. Any more past that and you're at the cap and it won't count. Second stage, tube hole. So many things to see and do in the tube hole. <laughs> and that's about all I have the time to read there. It's crazy. So the visuals in this game are what I feel are the most enticing reason to play the game itself. So it feels like it's a really a cross between Tempest and a rail shooter and sometimes you know a tunnel shooter but for the most part I think rail shooter best describes the title that Polybius is so if you're familiar with uh, titles like Tempest then I think this one will truly be a treat for you So, as we ran into an object there, you saw that we lost a shield. Unfortunately, another effect that happens to you is you also lose some speed, which is problematic. And something that also brings me to a little complaint that I have. There's no good indication of how long the stage you're in is. So it could be a super short stage, it could be a long stage, and you just have no way of really knowing. The faster you're traveling, of course, the faster you get through the stage, but <laughs> that's definitely an oversimplification of the game itself. Also, in addition to all these trippy psychedelic visuals, we have a great soundtrack that ranges from like trance like music to techno tunes and there's also the usual trippy Lomasov style bizarre sound effects that you have going on in the background Moving on. So I'm actually going to take a quick moment here to pop back to the main menu. And we're going to look at a stage further up in the order of stages. So I'm going to show you stage 9, Oscillate. And the particular reason I show you this stage is it introduces another really awesome effect, or not so much effect, really awesome stage type that the game has. There are stages in it that are basically slaloms, where we have to move to the left or right of the flag depending on which direction the flag is pointing. We get points for that, and instead of having gates to fly through, this, these are basically our gates. The more slaloms you've correctly passed on the right side, the faster you get going. So it definitely gets crazy fast. In addition to that, having enemies and obstacles and everything else, it's just a true treat. So while we're doing this, let's talk a little bit about Polybius itself, the name. So as I said in my intro, the game is inspired by an urban legend, and that urban legend stems all the way back from the early arcade days. 1981 to be precise. So the legend basically goes is for a period of time in Portland, Oregon there were these arcade cabinets that popped up that had the title on them Polybius and there were these crazy psychedelic psychoactive uh, arcade game that apparently was super addictive and it was monitored by these men in black and the game itself reportedly caused amnesia or insomnia, night tremors, and hallucinations in the people that played it. Now, the legend itself, Polybius, there's never indication that the arcade cabinet ever truly existed. So it's just one of those urban legends, but there is some truth to some of the earlier versions of Tempest causing problems with 
uh, people in like those kind of matters, not necessarily amnesia, but the psychedelic visuals that were even somewhat present in that title uh, were caused some issues there. And there was a, some sort of issues with the FBI and arcade owners back in the early 80s in um, Portland, Oregon, that could help give some root facts to the this urban legend. So, if, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, Llamasoft is essentially run by more or less one main individual, Jeff, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Minter, the Yak. And he was also the developer behind Tempest. So, an urban legend potentially inspired by one of his earlier works became a title that he decided to make over 20 years later. So that's a super fascinating bit of uh, gaming trivia, gaming history for you. And something that I think gives this game just that extra edge. Not only is it an incredibly engaging title itself, but it's got that unique history behind it. So, with that said, Let's start wrapping things up. Plus flavors for Polybius. So it's just one of those incredibly engaging games with these awesome psychedelic visuals. It's just the kind of thing that just sucks you in and almost puts you into this zen-like trance. And I love that about it. There's all these neat features, stages like the slalom stage I showed you. Later on you get the ability to hit these lifts that will send you flying into the sky and you're just... It's, it's insane. But... That's also brings me to the, my like minus flavor for it, and that sometimes it seems like there's just too much going on, and I have a hard time following what's on the screen. Really, some of my best performances on stages happen when I'm just zoning out and I'm not trying to focus and do the best I can, but rather just letting things happen naturally. But that said, a Especially if you're a fan of anything else that Llamasoft has done, or even the old school Tempest, I highly encourage you to check out this game. There's just so much awesome and amazing that's present here that will melt your mind if you play it for too long. And there we have it. Polybius served up for your enjoyment. I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining me today for Shoot 'em Up Saturday. And, as always, I look forward to seeing you again next week.